everybody welcome back to my channel I am honestly surprised that I haven't made this video in the past but for some reason I never just directly talked about it I wholeheartedly believe that you should stop taking topical steroids if you're someone that does and I have pretty good reasoning why so let's first start when topical steroids might be an option for someone if you have small patches of eczema all the way up to moderate eczema, do not touch topical steroids. I do understand that they are used decently well for people with... See, this is a very controversial topic and I want to be as transparent as possible. There are some cases where people have eczema that's so severe and they're are plenty of stories out there of topical steroids actually helping them through. If you have, you know, made it to your wits ends and you need help, the diet isn't working, you know, plenty of people have used them to just get to a space where their eczema is handleable. And I say that because I was actually that person. I had to use them when I was in middle school. I didn't even know it was related to diet at all at that point. When I was in middle school, I had to like put it on my legs, wrap my legs in saran wrap and sleep that way. And when I would wake up, my skin would look a lot better. Well, I did end up going through topical steroid withdrawal with the oozing and itching and all of that. Um, but eventually the eczema did go away and it seemed as though the topical steroids helped at least, you know, for me to sleep some nights. If it's helped you, I'm not trying to tell you that what you're saying is invalid. So let's just start there. But what I will say is for people who haven't used it, people who are currently using it, I really encourage you to wean yourself off of it or never start using it in the first place. Topical steroid withdrawal is a horrible, horrible outcome of using topical steroids. It looks like very red, very itchy. It it oozes and so one large difference between regular eczema and topical steroid withdrawal is that topical steroid withdrawal it actually oozes and so that's a whole thing another thing is your skin might look like there's little dots everywhere and that's very very typical it kind of looks like you have acne on your face but it can be anywhere and that's very typical of topical steroid withdrawal you itch it it oozes it's a whole thing and so honestly it's extremely hard to recover from topical steroid withdrawal another symptom of it is called red sleeve syndrome and it's basically where you'll have red skin you know basically all in this area and it basically takes over your body and you have to go through detox and it often looks like you have very red skin, you have extremely dry skin, you have very red skin, you're oozing, it's fine, it's and it just keeps cycling and cycling and cycling and it's just such a nightmare and I hate it for my clients. My clients who have it take three times as long to heal. Yes, I am seeing results with my program for people with topical steroid withdrawal, but it just takes so much longer. Like my program can help my clients heal in like four months. You know, I, mine completely cleared in four months, but people who have topical steroid withdrawal are taking like six months and more to heal. And it's sad and it's frustrating. And I just don't want to see people go through something that they don't have to go through. While I'm completely on the fence with Dupixin, it is a step up from topical steroids. So if you're in a position, you're trying your diet, you're trying to do all this stuff and nothing's working, people do go on Dupixent to get it to a level where it's manageable, it still itches, it ends up not working after time, you get rashes, your eyes have issues, there's a lot of side effects to Dupixent, but I think there's just some use cases where it can get you to a point where you can then switch off and go to diet. However, I personally and wholeheartedly believe you should take the holistic approach to healing eczema, but I know that there's a time and a place and I don't want, again, to make someone's feelings towards it feel invalid. So I hear you and I'm trying to have a fair discussion, but I'm really trying to warn you guys to not use it. I've seen people go through it and it's honestly the most miserable thing ever. They can be head to toe covered in flakes, scabs, and 
all of this stuff just because they tried to use topical steroids. However, I'm finding it extremely difficult to find research on topical steroids and it's probably not there for a reason. If you try to look up topical steroid withdrawal, it's also called topical steroid dependence and that's you know, it's the same thing, and when I was doing my research on it, it came up interchangeably. However, it's just telling you what it is. It's not telling you why it's stored in your body for ages and ages. I, honest to God, wish I understood more. Um, I don't understand why if you used topical steroids for 10 years, we're off of it for 10 years, in 10 years, you can have withdraw symptoms and it's so frustrating and it makes me honestly so sad for people who are just trying to get relief from eczema and I'm honestly disappointed in dermatologists for recommending topical steroids to people with you know not that horrible of eczema you know if you just have little patches here and there don't don't use it I just wish the protocol for dermatologists was Step one is, you know, figure out the cause of it. Are you very stressed? Are you eating very poorly? Like, I wish there was a more holistic, functional approach to this that dermatologists can take before they recommend topical steroids. And honest to God, they're throwing it out there so fast. And the truth of the matter is, it has to do with the pharmaceutical industry. And that's another controversial topic, but it's honestly the truth. Why do you think that I can't find research on topical steroid withdrawal and finding the links between it and what nutrients would help heal it? It's because how bad would it be for the pharmaceutical industry if what they're trying to sell has all this research out there saying that it's horrible? So it just upsets me that that's the way things currently are. I know things are getting better, which is good, and that's why I'm on this platform saying what I'm saying because I know that there's another way. I mean, I'm sitting here. You can go back to my old videos. I show you my skin. I do not have anything on my arms, and I did it through diet and lifestyle. Eczema is toxic overload and so it's from pollution it's from using antibiotics it's from using antibacterial sprays it's from a bad diet it's a combination of a lot of things that create toxic buildup and show in the form of eczema but what I always try to say though is eczema is almost a blessing because there's a lot of people who go years and years and years and their body never shows them that there's a problem and our bodies are so sensitive it says hey there's disease in your body you've got to fix it and it shows you from such an early age and if you course correct now you're setting yourself up for a life that is disease free and I mean that in every way I mean it there's so many studies that have shown you know you can heal cancer through diet and lifestyle reducing your toxic overload you can get rid of Alzheimer well you can prevent Alzheimer's you can get rid of arthritis psoriasis autoimmune disorders like those and so I just you know this is a warning but I also want to give you guys hope like you can make it through this it is a serious condition but you're setting yourself up for a life without it and I think that's you know amazing you're setting yourself up for a life without eczema but also a life without cancer and disease and that's incredible to itself and hopefully things just continue to change and more people speak out about it and I want to grow this channel as large as I can and be a voice for those who don't understand eczema, for those who have been tricked into using topical steroids, become dependent on them. And I'm just wanting to be the spokesperson to say this industry needs to change, the dermatologist needs to start changing what they do, stop making people dependent on drugs, and start including holistic approaches. And this is just how I feel. I got rid of it myself. This whole channel is dedicated to me teaching you how I did it, how I helped my clients do it, and 
don't give up. <laughs> if you're on a healthy lifestyle and you're starting to detox and it's getting worse, don't give up. Please keep pushing through and keep doing this because it's so worth it in the end. And I'm here to support you and you can do this and start weaning yourself off of topical steroids. And you may have to go through topical steroid withdrawal, but it's for the better and all of that. So I hope you guys like this video. This is a lot more intense than a lot of my lighthearted things, but it's just something I needed to say. I haven't fully came out and said like, don't use topical steroids. And here I am. Okay guys, so I think I picked an interesting time to come and talk to you about this. I just made some lunch and I was actually just shooting some bread. Um, I actually work with this brand. They like sent me some bread. I'm obsessed with them and so I was just shooting for Instagram for the bread company. But beside the point, I wanted to actually say something very serious and I was a little bit hungry so now I have my sandwich and we can just chit chat. I was actually speaking to someone who worked with Dupixent, who wasn't a client of Dupixent but worked for the company um, within sales and stuff. And they informed me that to be on Dupixent, you actually first have to be on topical steroids. And so I wanted to just let you guys know that if Dupixent is something you wanted to do without doing topical steroids, you're going to have to get your doctor to write it off that you don't need to do topical steroids first. So basically they're trying to frame Dupixent as the last use case and to use topical steroids first. Personally, this is a little bit infuriating um, because I think Dupixent is a slightly better option. Um, there's a lot of side effects, don't get me wrong, but it, you know, we haven't seen that it has withdrawal syndromes like topical steroid withdrawal. And so I was actually pretty mad to find out that you have to go through topical steroids before you go through Dupixent. And I just wanted to pop in and add to the video that this is something I learned um, prior to the first time filming it because I've been having discussions with people. And another thing I wanted to do is read to you guys people's experiences with Dupixent. By the way, if you want to know what this bread is, um, it's basically a gluten-free vegan bread. It's by the brand Simple Needs. Um, I do have a discount code for 15% off and it's Mills15. Um, if you have eczema, this is like an eczema friendly bread. I've ate it like the whole time through my skin issues and stuff. I talked about it in one of my previous videos. Just wanted to let you know, in case you're a little bit nosy about what this bread is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read everyone's responses. So I posted this in a generalized eczema support group. It's not my support group on Facebook. It is just like this bigger one, a more generalized one. And so this is what they said. My doctor wants to put me on it, but it makes people gain weight, so I didn't. The next person says, I have been on it approximately two months. Notice results immediately. I'm not 100%, but close. So far, so good. I'm on it six months now. No weight gain for me. And I think if that were the case, mine was so severe on the hands, I would have still tried it. It's been a life changer for me. Someone else said, pink eye had to stop. So Dupixin is linked to pink eye as well. I'm scheduled for my first injection, um, it was actually yesterday, so hopefully it'll help. Tired of wearing long sleeves in the summer. Incredible, 95% improvement of all eczema symptoms, minimal side effects. I've been on Dupixin since May, game changer, someone says love it. They, another person says, I love, I love the results, but the burning eyes and muscle pain kind of sucks, but at least I can sleep at night. Someone said, I was on it for one year and then the eye side effects kicked in and the doctor took me off of it. Worked great while I was on it. Been on it for over a year, skin cleared almost 100%, but I do have eye tenderness almost after every injection. I have noticed weight gain while on it, but nothing terrible. The experience is wonderful. The only downside is dry eyes. Next person says, been life changing for me, finally relief. So with that, I do want to say Dupixin is new and we don't know what the long term side effects of this is going to look like. What happens when you get off of Dupixin? I've also heard that Dupixin can cause a rash unrelated to eczema. 
I just want you guys to know all the facts and there's been some results obviously with Dupixent. I don't know what happens after years of use and then you come off of it. I don't know if it has withdrawals. Um, and so I just say this, be very careful. I obviously recommend going the natural route. Um, the thing that I always preach to everyone is first start with eliminating fridge foods. And so this is my acronym and it stands for fried foods, refined sugar, eggs, dairy, and gluten. It's spelled F-R-E-D-G, but I just pronounce it fridge to make it easy. And I mean, that's what I did. I used to have eczema up and down my arms and I refused to put topical steroids on it. I refused to go to the doctor and I healed it naturally. So obviously that's my recommendation to all of you. Just know what you're getting into if you want to do something like Dupixent. Um, very much try to make it so that you don't have to take topical steroids first. So I just wanted to add that onto this video so that you guys have all the facts that I know and updated as I get updated. Um, and the bread thing is just a funny little thing. I was just shooting. I'm not trying to sell you guys the bread. If you do want to enjoy the bread, it is vegan, gluten-free, egg-free, all of that. Um, it's refined sugar-free, and I do really like it. So this is my personal recommendation to you guys. But with that being said, the real video is just about you and I talking about topical steroids, Dupixent, and the natural remedies. So good luck healing. Um, I'm always here to talk to you. You can message me on Instagram. I just want you guys to heal. And if that means using Dupixent, then that's, it is what it is. But I do encourage you to detox your life, start getting your eczema under control through diet and lifestyle in addition to those other things. Because your diet and lifestyle contributes to a lot of disorders and diseases. Leaky gut is the core of so many disorders and diseases, including eczema. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. I I need support, you know? I come out here and I try to be a leader in this and I need support. And so, if you guys subscribe and like this, follow me on Instagram, show me support and love, I will keep fighting for this cause. So, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! She waves, but I wanna see them